Hi, everybody. Welcome to this very special Broadway Podcast Network Town Hall event. Tonight, we celebrate Legally Blonde, the musical, and we also honor and support Broadway Cares and Equity Fights AIDS. I'm Dori Berenstein, host of the BPN's Deep Dive Broadway podcast and one of the lead producers of Legally Blonde. Before we get started, a little housekeeping. Throughout tonight's event, you'll be reminded to contribute to Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. Please know that with every passing day that theaters remain dark, entertainment professionals face unprecedented health and financial challenges requiring immediate attention and resources. Donate to Broadway Cares using the donate button in the YouTube chat or visit bpn.fm backslash bcefa. Uh, two, now tonight we have so many blondes with us. <laughs> it's amazing. We could talk to each one of them for hours, but to save a little bit of time with introductions, you can find everyone's background uh, on each of the guests at bpn.fm deep backslash beat uh, forward slash actually deep dive Broadway. Now, finally, uh, if any of you want to ask a question, all you have to do is text um, question to 63566, and we'll get to as many as we can. Let's dive in. I'm so thrilled to start with everybody at day one. And so day one of Legally Blonde involved my dear treasured uh, Legally Blonde co-producers, uh, Hal Luftig, Mike Isaacson, and Kristen Kasky, who's not able to join us today, and our fearless leader who joins soon thereafter, director and choreographer extraordinaire, Jerry Mitchell. Woo -hoo! Hey, welcome, hey, everybody. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Man, proud. Uh, Snap it out. Well, we it's so exciting to bring our family together. And why don't we start off by just talking about those first moments, those first, the first moment I remember how when you said, I have an idea. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I did. Um, you know, and I think it's worth repeating the story of how the idea came to me was I had seen the movie by myself and thoroughly enjoyed it. And then a group of friends, uh, you know, when you want, wanted to go to a movie, and you know when you don't want to be the only one to say, ah, oh, I've seen that. So I just went along, and that's what they wanted to see. And because I had seen it already, it kind of freed me up to, to look at Elle's story and think, you know, this is not only inspirational, but it's what a, a true musical should have, an arc of where a character starts in one place, and ends up in another that she didn't know she wanted to end up in, and uh, along the way teaches you know others a lot of stuff about themselves too. So I that that's when it dawned on me, and I thought, wow, this would make a great musical. And um, then I brought spoke to you, and I spoke to Mike, and I spoke to Kristen, and the wildest thing was not one of you said that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> And you all got really enthusiastic. And I was like, this is gonna, this is cool. Because oh, I, I had done something. I was reluctant. I was like, because we had done Thoroughly Modern Millie. Right. Mm -hmm. I was like, do we want it? Is it the same thing? And you kept saying, just watch the movie, just watch the movie. And I kept ignoring it. And you you FedExed me the DVD. And I, it was a Friday night. I thought, okay, I'll just bang this thing out and call them and say no. And 20 minutes into the movie, I went, holy. He's so, this is such a great idea. And I called you that night. You're like, why mm -hmm. are you on Friday night? Like, we need to do the show. Yeah. Do the show. Yeah. And we, yeah. that night, there was only yeah. one person who should direct and choreograph. That's right. How the hell That's are you right. going to get him? Do you remember right. that conversation? Well, yes. <laughs> I said, I don't, is there, and we said, does anybody know him? Does anybody, you know, know, you know, does anybody have his number? And I said, nope, but we're going to get him. And yeah, then right. I, as luck would have it, he was walking out of the 42nd Street subway station. I was walking in and like I attacked him. Yes. I literally like, in, he did have a moment of look on his face like, okay, oh, security, but security. security. Was, we I'm were walking talking, back, I'm walking, we, yeah. We were talking about this today, Hal, and Hal thought he had mentioned Legally Blonde to me on the street, but he didn't. He told right. me that he wanted me to come to a meeting and I walked into that meeting in some right. office. I don't even remember. <laughs> it was Mike's. 
And you guys were all sitting on one side of the table, sort of, and I sat down and you threw the DVD on the table and you said, <laughs> we want to make this into a musical. And I went, oh, absolutely, me too. I love that movie. And I said, I know how to do that. I am Elle Woods and I did chase my Warner Huntington and I was broken, somebody broke up with me and broke my heart. So I said, yeah, I, I know how to tell this story. And it was just good timing. And the rest, as they say, is history. Um, and when you first brought it up, Hal, I knew I knew immediately that it's something that I had to do because my daughter was seven yeah. years old at the time. Yeah. And I thought, what an amazing message for her to grow up with that it's cool to be smart. So it was yeah. no brainer. It yeah. was definitely yeah. going to happen. I mean, yeah. That's how I got whole... into it too. Cause I had three nieces, three very young nieces. Yeah. And I was really aware of the conflicts they were going through on who to be. Mm -hmm. And then when you looked at that story of that character and, 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 and that definition of finding herself with such integrity, style, yes, but also integrity, you know, it was mm -hmm. that, you know, as producers, as artists, we go, what do we want to put in the world? What do, mm -hmm. what do we want to share? Mm -hmm. And what, you mm -hmm. know, ultimately it's mm -hmm. what, you know, what you say. And, you know, there was just, it, it just was so clear. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was so and, exciting, yeah. Jerry, part of it from really the very beginning. And, yeah. and really the process that we went through to fun, put the team together. To be the first director and choreographer and to be brought in before the writers were chosen and to be asked to help be a part of that mm -hmm. was one of the greatest things you guys ever, gifts you ever gave to me because it's something that's followed me through on almost every other musical I've created since. And the lesson of learning and and I remember you. We you we decided to send the word out that we were going to do the musical and to try and get writers to do spec yeah. songs. And you a lot of brought in songs. And I asked you guys. I was out here at the beach on Fire Island, and I asked you guys to put all the songs on one CD, but don't put any names on it. Right. Just the right. lyrics. Remember that names. And I sat and listened to the songs, and immediately when I heard the song, "Oh my God, you guys." I knew that was the voice. That right. was the voice for this musical. And right. there were a lot of other great composers who put in some great songs. Mm -hmm. But that seemed closer to the clock uh, for me. Yeah. And that's when we called up Larry. Yeah. yeah. A perfect and, and, moment and, <laughs> to bring in Larry and Nell. Yeah. Yeah. Join Yay. us, Larry and Nell. Yay. Composer you know, as, Nell as Benjamin, we're coming Larry into the room, I just want to, hi, guys. Hi. I want to say, you know, how seamlessly, if you think about it, you know, in, in today's world, because uh, we talked a little bit about this earlier, Jerry, was uh, even with, you know, kinky boots. And there was always, you know, some angst, you know, until we got the right team. Not with this show, man. We, we you know, we found Larry and Nell on those demos that they put in. And then we needed... Um, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm now I'm reading double. Laura Bell says, you know, Mike <laughs> don't, don't, read those text. don't read those texts. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. I'm so technology. There was no, there was no, there was no angst. There was no angst. There was and, no and, and you know, this moment of yeah. God, you guys hearing, hearing those songs that Larry Nell wrote, I said, that's the voice. That is the voice we need for this musical. <laughs> Who are they? Let's meet them. <laughs> and then, and I want Larry, I wanted, but Larry and I had already worked together. We had worked <laughs> on this crazy little Disney thing called Geppetto, and Larry did all the music for Stephen Schwartz had written it, but Larry, you did all the dance stuff for me, and we had actually worked together already once before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did we know that, Mike, Dory? Did we know that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you know, that's what happens with age, guys. It just goes. But I uh, let's have a show of hands, though. I mean, it was a great, easy team to find. But let's have a show of hands of those who remember this opening of the second act, the mariachi number. Come on. Come oh, yeah. on. Remember that? <laughs> it was the only time I thought to myself. It was. Uh, what? Uh, was it called Hello Ladies? Think, no, it wasn't Hello Ladies. It was, um, it was the Elsa. Senseless Track. It was Elle's mother. Oh. It was how <laughs> Elle's mom or dad 
married her stepmother. Oh. Her stepmother was no, a no, no, flight that was, attendant. That actually that was, was the bend and snap Concord number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we wanted to do so badly. And Jerry was the, like, the, the I'm idea already was, doing 60s stewardesses in another musical. I am not doing it again. The premise <laughs> was, can we, can we the premise was that Mel had the idea that um, <laughs> Elle's mom had won the heart of Elle's dad because Elle's dad was a jet setting businessman on the Concord. Oh. And because the Concord ceilings are low. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's because right. Can, and, we, can and, we do another then, podcast of all the songs that we had to cut from the show? Oh, God. It would be a long, 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 long I, I think it would be thrilling to do them because the there were so many good ones. There were a lot well, of good ones. So many good ones. Let's bring in Heather. Heather Hawk. Because I was just about to tell the story about. So there we go. So how serious this went. Hi. So my, you know, Kristen, Mike, and I, and you, Dory. You know, we struggled with who could write the book to this. You know, and we went down the list of you know the, the, the obvious you know choices, and none of them appealed. And I think it was I'm not sure who I, I saw it and loved it, but I think Mike, you did too. Freaky Friday. Yeah. It was Kristen's idea. Kristen saw the and film. It was, and, and then I went to see it. Yeah, this is the voice. This is, yeah. So you and I set and, out to L. Was and, Kristen there too, Dory? Were you? I was there too. Yeah, we were. I oh. think we were all there. Yeah. So yeah. we set out to L.A. We called. Uh, um, I found that name of Heather's agent and I called and I said, um, you know, would she be interested in writing a Broadway musical? I said, I don't know. Let me ask. I'll get back to you. And he called back and he said, she said she, you know, would be interested in at least meeting you guys. Um, and between that time and when we actually got to LA, Mike and I, by, I don't know why, why what reason we went, we saw the producers again. And there's that famous line when they're casting for Springtime for Hitler. And uh, uh, Dick Sean comes out and does this thing and, and Zero Mostel stands up and says, we found our Hitler. <laughs> so, you know, we realized when we got to this hotel where we met, we we'll to meet Heather for lunch, nobody knew what she looked like. And we were like, how the Hitler. hell do we know it's Heather? <laughs> I mean, does anybody have any idea that any, you know, nothing. So, Person after person after person came in. It, it, he, it, no, and no, you know, Heather, you know, no. And then this woman, Heather Hawkern, walked in, dressed like Elle Woods, except it wasn't, you know, that was just who she was. Blonde, <laughs> beautiful, you know, uh, smart, you know, everything that Elle, you know, is. And we sat down and we talked for, what, 10 minutes? And we kind of knew And I said, uh, Mike, I, I, would you join me? I have to go to the men's room. We went to the men's room. Into, <laughs> right. He like, got a little nervous. Like, I you know, girls. It was so. Yeah. Why do you guys always right. do that? Why do guys and, right. Why do we do that? We walked into the men's room and I turned to him oh. and I said, We found our Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> and that was our wonderful Heather. But I think uh, I want to say something very important because up until that time, everyone we had been talking to, kept telling us, they kept saying, this is a bad idea for a musical. Mm -hmm. they, kept, they, did, they kept trying to turn Elle into a caricature. Yeah. I will never forget the first words out of your mouth, Heather, were, <laughs> I really love this character. I think she's a great person. Yeah. And, and Jerry, you had kept saying that. She's the center of the show and she's a real person. We have to find that. And yeah. that was the beginning of, of the show. Really. Of a show. And then you started to tell us a story about a plumber or something that you like was totally like off in your life. But you know, there you were laughing about it. And we, that was- Oh, it. we were that, dying yeah. laughing. Remember, I huh? remember falling <laughs> so in love with you all. And I just uh, knew intuitively that like, these are my people. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and we're talking about some exercise thing that was like absurd. And I, I, I just remember feeling very strongly that that this was meant to be. Yeah. Well, um, we're so grateful that you did because we felt the same way. And here we are. And yeah. Here we are. And and I should tell our listeners that when we did our tryout in San Francisco back in 2007, 
Um, Heather had just given birth to Harper in October, the October four. So this is yeah. like January. So you know, yeah. there she was with a three month infant. Um, well, I, I've got one better than that. I remember when she, <laughs> when she got pregnant and she called me and we and she said, "Oh, Jerry, don't fire me, but I'm going to have a baby." <laughs> I, <laughs> I was three months pregnant. We're ready to rehearse. I had a total denial about the whole. Thing. Don't worry yeah. about it. It'll work. I out. remember that. I remember that. that. Fired Heather because she was pregnant. Legally Blonde, the musical that fired its female book writer. No, that's right. Because you were pregnant. Called me worried that I was going to fire her because because you were like giving birth like two weeks before we were supposed to start rehearsals. Right. Yeah. I said yeah. it's not going to be a problem. It'll be fine. Harper yeah. was like two and a half, three months. Oh yeah. You know, which was actually turned out to be a blessing because while you were watching, you know. Uh, uh, rehearsals and tech and stuff, it gave me something to do, you know, uh, to <laughs> walk in the theater, you know, you know, cradling Harper. And it sort of helped us both. You got to write the show and I got to like chill out. <laughs> yeah. So Heather, Heather, would you recommend uh, opening a musical with a newborn? Absolutely. I think it really was the, the secret to my success. And I think, you know, you're welcome. Helps get the baby weight off. That's some that's some advice that our viewers yeah. can take. It was yeah. easy. What like a <laughs> at once. Two birds. Yeah. 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 Mike, I don't know how we're gonna do that with Nancy, but that's a whole different podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dory, I can't hear you. Dory, Dory you're on mute again, babe. Uh oh. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah. you're doing, you're doing, are wait, are you doing a? Um, no, you're not. That's just what's in that copper mug, Heather. Uh, <laughs> a non alcoholic uh, Moscow mule. Well, this so is like what lime juice? An alcoholic Moscow mule. Did you make? Did you make? Did you make that lime concoction? Yes. Ooh. Isn't it great? It's what's deal with that. It's every yeah. night. This is my it's pandemic delicious. elixir. Laura, Laura Bell Bundy sent around a margarita recipe in anticipation of, of this event. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and we should put it up somewhere. It's <laughs> very complicated. Yeah. We're going to do exactly how the show was written. We yeah. would all be in a room and we would digress and be like talking about over here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Cocktails. Yeah. Yeah. And Jerry would say, Focus, people. Focus, people. We have to work, have to work on the Sorry, show. No, unless, unless we could get Jerry to talk about what he was eating. And then he'd be like, you do a little grilled chicken breast yeah. and some steamed vegetables. Yeah. And yeah. Like, <laughs> well, <laughs> while the rest of us were picking out on like whatever we could, that wasn't nailed down. At one point, yeah. I was eating McDonald's being like, oh, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> I got on that. Oh my God. That's so how and Mike are going to join us at the end to kind of go back to a lot of this, but, uh, but we're watching we're in, yeah, we're, and because yeah. we need to know about uh, Laura Bell Bundy's margarita recipe. We're going to bring on yet another blonde Yeah, uh, and uh, Laura Bell Bundy are Elle Woods. Please join us. Hal, Mike, we'll see you a little later. Okay. Bye. Bye, Hal. Bye, Mike. Bye. There she is. Yay. Welcome. I think you're on mute, Laura Bell. There we go. Am I am I unmuted now? You're um, unmuted now. Yeah. Hi. 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 It's so good to see you. I know. Oh, hi, Heather, my sister. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's amazing to watch this, and um, sorry I don't get to to chat with Hal and Mike yet. Yeah. Hey, if only we could have more people in the room, you know, it's a little tricky. Um, but, but it's so exciting to to uh, have you all together. And uh, Laura Bell, you um, uh, look like you could step on stage, even though uh, we were on Broadway in 2007 and not a second has gone by. Amazing. And oh, thanks. Uh, I think uh, Botox. <clears throat> Botox did it. And not not lately though. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. We were just talking about Heather having the baby and calling me and saying, "You're not going to fire me, are you? Because I, I'm pregnant. I'm going to have a baby two weeks before we start rehearsal." Oh, I remember. I remember when she told me she was pregnant, and she was nursing. She was literally like leaving the room to pump and nurse throughout all the rehearsal process, and having just gone through that myself, or I'm still kind of in the midst of that. 
I have no idea how you yeah. were able to write the show. And also mom brain and like that fog, uh, that brain fog of like this, this, you had two babies being birthed around the same time. Yeah. Um, and, and, and to try to do that when you have this like mom brain fog, like I can't even imagine. There was a breakdown in San Francisco. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was for everybody. You at least had an excuse. Yeah. We, all, we all broke down. The we all broke down. Yeah. yeah. I, re I, re I remember Mike walking me around the block in San Francisco and saying to me, dead serious, Hal is considering jumping off the top of the building. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Shoot. Sorry. They want in on it. They want in on it. Hello. That's Ooh, how. Well, we're getting we're getting a whole bunch of questions that they want to know the whole process for you and when you finally became Elle Woods. What was that like from your vantage point you know we all know uh you know uh seeing you come in for Elle Woods was just so thrilling but from your vantage point what was that like well um so my whole story is is this um i uh i had done hairspray with jerry and jerry was a choreographer and i i watched jerry uh have you know he pay such attention to detail and work so closely with Jack O'Brien and, and really just bring the story to life. Like he was, he was so involved and brought that energy. And I would always think like, wow, he should direct. And um, at the time when the announcement came for Legally Blonde was happening as a musical, um, I was a uh, Kristen Chenoweth standby in Wicked. And I had gone on for a few weeks at one point and I had invited people and Jerry had come to see the show. And when I saw the announcement that he was going to direct Legally Blonde, which was going to be his directorial debut, I sent him a note and I was, and I said, Hey, I don't know if you remember this Jerry, but I, I sent you a note and I said, Hey, congratulations um, uh, on, on getting this opportunity. This is so you deserve this. Like, this is so great for you. And, um, and I know someone who would really be really good for Elle Woods, wink, wink. <laughs> and, and he was like, honey, honey, why do you think that I came to see you in Wicked? I wanted to see if you could carry a show. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then he goes, when your time is right, I'll bring you in front of the creative team. Well, months went by. And I was living in LA at the time, you know, doing my, my research on Elle Woods. <laughs> um, and I was, you know, just doing like TV and stuff and being completely broke. And, <clears throat> and so uh, I, I got this opportunity to develop these musicals um, uh, at the O'Neill in Connecticut. And so I, I went out there and while I was out there, I got this call from a theater agent at my agency that I actually, in New York that I didn't really deal with all the time. I, I um, but he was great. His name was Alan Willig. And there was um, a, an agent in LA that I had that when the audition for the first official reading of Legally Blonde came by, that LA agent said, offer only. And the theater agent in New York called me and was like, I just want to run this by you and make sure that you're okay with it. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, I was like, I told Jerry Mitchell I would go in for this. And I happened to be in the tri-state area. I wasn't in LA. And so uh, Bernie Telsey's office sent me all the material, um, which guys was three songs to prepare. Yeah. Three, three it's songs cool and 12 pages of lines. 12 pages of lines that well, I had to learn. The musical isn't in. called Warner Huntington. <laughs> <laughs> right? Ale Woods. Um, hey, Ale Woods, it's me, Chancho. Um, anyway, how's Manny Herrera? Um, but so I, I like memorized. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got that card. <laughs> I love it. Um, I like memorized all the lines. I, I, first of all, I just had a feeling, kind of like the same feeling that I think maybe all of us had, where just this feeling of like something setting in, um, like, like this is right. And when I got the material, 
It was funny. It was emotional. Um, I really connected with with it and with her, um, especially the Legally Blonde ballad. Like, just I I had experienced that before. I was the blonde who wasn't taken seriously. I was the bubbly girl who everybody assumed assumed wasn't smart, but I was an AP calculus too. You know, I was I was like her. This was me, and I felt like something very, very connected with this. And I, it, and I always find that um, when material is written well and you connect with it, you memorize it quickly. And I memorized this shit so quickly. <laughs> you memorize and, it um, really quickly. Yeah. And you also would rememorize it when we would change it. When we changed it a lot. You, you Why did you change it? Yeah, like I can still remember San Francisco, and there would be like new drafts. And not like the fun, it's a whole new song, but like Little verse things. two is different. Right. And verse three is now verse four. <laughs> and like it was a it was it was a nightmare. It was like a some kind of a, a genius mental test. And you were just there every single night. You did it. We would yeah. sit in the back of the theater and, and and assume we could just give you little rewrites like that all the time. You probably should have not gotten it right every single time and we wouldn't have rewritten it so much. But yeah, well, you were, I, 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 at that point. At that point, we were teammates and we were all in it together and we were just trying to make it work. And I think at that point, I was just as invested. And, you know, anyway, so um, I came in for you guys for that first reading. And I have to tell you this. So I had I was staying with a friend who had a baby in New York City. And the only way that I could rehearse the songs as I went on the West Side Highway at midnight and I sang all the songs out loud before the audition and then I came in the next day and I met you guys and every but every other girl at the audition was someone who had played Amber Von Tussle or Glinda huh. <laughs> <laughs> it deep? Uh, let's, let's bring on your your um, uh, love interest Warner Huntington the uh, third oh. Richard Blake please join us Richard Richard there he is hey Look at this. Oh my God, you guys. Look at this group. This like uh, first, I just want to say one thing. Um, I actually did think it was Legally Blonde, the Warner Huntington story. Uh, <laughs> I told you. So, uh, hey, I got yeah, it. so um, that and, and my only other thing I want to say is, um, speaking of Manny Herrera, is anyone taking his classes? Get on it. Oh, he I has know. classes. They're free on Instagram, the real Manny Herrera, on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. He is putting out jump rope classes oh. and boxing yeah. classes that will whip you into shape. Oh my goodness, baby, get alert. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. Hi, uh, hi. Uh, oh, baby Irish. Oh. Oh, just funny. Oh. Mine just went to bed. He he. Mine just put himself to bed. He 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 was done playing video games and went to bed. So, uh, we don't oh my god! It's How later. Is he we don't. He's almost nine. Oh he's almost God. nine, and uh, we, we it's not normal, but in this uh, in this COVID situation, it's really the only way that he can see his friends is if he or, or talk to his friends. Uh, so we let him, you know, normally during the school week he doesn't he doesn't get to, but uh, because uh, he gets a little bit of time each night to talk to his friends and communicate and have some uh, playtime with other kids his age and not just me and mommy. <laughs> Uh, Larry and Nell, do you remember writing uh, songs for these two and um, what your inspiration was? <laughs> well, there's a line in the original movie which we thought would be the best title for a song ever. So the original song, which became serious, uh, the, the lyric, if I remember correctly, the chorus uh, originally went something like, uh, we want a future that... We we need our feet on the ground. A clock is ticking. Time to stop dicking around. Yeah. Stop dicking around. Stop dicking around. Stop dicking around. Hey guys, isn't dicking around a great idea for a song? And it's like, yeah. stop dicking around. Where's the one thing? Sushi restaurant. Sushi restaurant. Because yeah. we were like, it's California. Yeah. So, so we it's thought we have the fancy restaurant. We'd have a backup chorus of sushi chefs. So serious yeah. was almost yeah. called. So around so we showed and, this song we played it in person for hal and and i think dory and, oh God, I love and mm -hmm. we said we think that dig around is a great title we think the audiences will will be fine with it i've never seen four producers <laughs> with their heads in the same exact slow like, motion no. so we love the tune 
The tune, tune was fabulous. I, recycle it. I think we need to do a concert. I think we need to do a concert of all the cut songs from the no, no, I We've I done think, some of those songs, and songs. we're okay with not doing that. <laughs> we we've beta tested that theory. Rockstar, rock star. I love rock star. We actually yeah. did that. Oh yeah. wow. We did. We did a we version did of that. And Andy Carl that. actually sang and it Orfe. once. At, at, at Andy Carl and Orfe once sang that. And so oh, no, we, we've already we've already found out. We, we're sparing you that that I. <laughs> Richard, you never you never heard stop stop dicking around. You never heard that. No, no, it was, it was gone by the time I got there. Serious. In a way, was, uh, it was the same. At the first at the first reading that we did at the first uh, workshop that we did, uh, uh, it was it was serious by then. Yeah. So. Serious was and the I, song that was like the cue to how the evening was going to go, because. When Richard would come in with "Honey, I'm not through," like yeah. the audience would respond, "You're like, okay, we're like, yeah. we're we're off. Like that's the moment right. that we yeah. know that we have them because, oh my God, everybody enjoyed, but you can't hear that moment where yeah. like they okay, the audience they, is they expecting our humor. Yeah. The audience is expecting verse two to be now it's Al's turn to sing, but no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that was always the joke that sort of like got the favorite moment. Well, let's still my let's take a moment. That's still my <laughs> Heather, um, we're gonna we're gonna have to say goodbye for right now. And uh, uh, Andy, Carl, and Orfe are gonna you. jump in. It's Love so good you. to see you. Good to see you. Hey, you know the other thing that nobody has said about Larry oh, yeah. <laughs> is Heather gone finally. Oh God! Oh. <laughs> Jesus. You guys, thank God we got rid of her. Who, who, who are you holding? The book. Really? No. <laughs> this, is, this is Samson. This is Samson was um was one of Boo Boo's original brothers that we adopted soon thereafter. Oh. Yeah, he's old. There's, there's, and there's Boo Boo. Oh, there's Boo Boo. Oh, Boo -Boo. Oh. Rest in peace. Rest Boo -Boo. in peace. Boo, Hi. Boo, the bruiser who could never bark. He could bark. <laughs> well, he barked. He just couldn't it. He just like <laughs> mat, mat. But he really. Do you remember all the sleepovers that took place to make sure everybody was comfortable with Bruce? Yeah. What were those like? Well, those were awesome. Um, Chloe Rufus was just the smelliest, drooliest creature on God's green earth. So it just, we'd wake up and the whole bed was wet and stanky. It was fantastic. And, and uh, Bill Berloni would always say, you know, you have to clean inside her folds. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Yeah, you know that's my thing. Yeah. That's what Take the shit and clean it inside the fold. If I had a nickel, Jerry, do you remember the first time we met Chico? It was some kind of photo shoot press event in a hotel room. It was a hotel room, and Bill was like, it was yeah. "March thirteenth, two thousand and six. Oh my god, I love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he it was after casting, and Bill was like. You know, Chico is a rescue. He's been badly abused, and he may not get along with anyone. Nobody may be able to hold him. And Jerry just gets down on the floor, and Chico runs to him. Oh, yeah. And 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 I was like, smart Chico. You walked in the door. You're gonna I be walked stumbling. in the door, and I laid on the floor, yep. completely flat. And the dog yeah. walked over to me. And Bill always said that he remembered that, and and bonded with me immediately because I just got down on his level. And uh, it was kind of crazy. That dog was a superstar. I mean, that dog, once he finally earned his show, man, that dog performed that show on Broadway and just about everywhere else. Everywhere else, else. yeah. Everywhere, everywhere else. else. And, and he loved few people as much as he loved Jerry. Other than Bill, no, the person he loved second most in the world was Jerry, Jerry Mitchell. Oh. Yeah. yeah we have five a lot of fighting for everyone else. I had pockets. Yeah, no, he was like, Ang. Laura yeah. Bell, he abortion. But like, as far as the men went, Jerry was number two. Yeah, it was great in the rehearsal hall and like, yeah. you know, to have all these dogs in the corner. Yeah. It was very nice oh, energy. Yeah. You could go over, you could sort I, of yeah. the dogs. I will say, I really did prefer Boo's bark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just Boo's saying. Bark was uh -huh. This sort of like cigarette cough. And, yeah. <laughs> the birth of a car of a car. Ooh, that was hilarious. Who did it to like his, his last breath? He, he, knew he literally that knew that cue. And they all know it. They all learned it from Boo. Yeah. They all know how to do it. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. man.
have, we've got, Richard, oh my God, guys, everybody's going to say it. So. Richard, we've got to say goodbye. It's so. Well, <laughs> Richard, I love you all. Richard, love you. That was really funny, Richard, that video we made for Dominic. It was incredible. It was yeah. amazing. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Bye. Richard. Bye. Uh, and Nikki Snelson. Richard, you guys, winner. Richard was a great kisser. I just have to say, Richard. Oh, Blake now that he's gone, he can't defend himself. A great kisser, great lips. Good, good, good to know. Well, everyone should tell him now. Even better than Teddy. Teddy, <laughs> Teddy was delicious too. Teddy was no awesome, guys. Yeah, yeah, Teddy, Teddy was, was a dog. Teddy was Brooke Windham. Where's Brooke Windham? Brooke Windham. Nikki uh -oh. Snelson, please uh -oh. come on in. I've got a package. She's trying um, to. Do you want me to get this one? Yeah, you got it. Okay. We have someone coming. Uh, yeah. Full disclosure: we have a small child who's trying to uh, bust into show business right now. So. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You guys. Yeah. Remember, I was listening to you talk about um, the lyric changes. Do you all remember when we had to do the B-roll in San Francisco, and Larry and Nell had given me an entire new lyric for "Hey, wait a second, when I beckon." Oh, yeah, yeah. That's not what it was. So I'm like, Jerry's like, you'll learn it. You'll learn it. I know you. You'll be fine. And Jordan and I that way. We had those memories. And I said, well, I can't go up there shooting it. And I just do. wrote all the lyrics on my list. Wait, I'm watching you guys on YouTube at the same time. We don't want to upstage you, Nikki. Hi, friends. Ladies and gentlemen. Brooke Windham for the next production. Yeah. Mr. Hyper 70. Oh, there you are. It's nice to see you all. Hey, I'm oh. on the screen. Get in, get in. I, re I do remember, Orfe, I do remember oh. you writing the lyrics on your hand and wrist. I it was on one side of my wrist, so when I'd be like, so wait a second, <laughs> look how the guys came running. Like, I'm like, oh, my God. Well, I'm going to be like, man, that big good So I wrote them all, and thankfully I had bracelets and stuff, so you couldn't tell. Yes. And I wrote them so small, like minuscule, but that's what got me through because you had handed them to me 20 minutes before showtime. You're and welcome. I <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm okay, so if you ever look really closely at the B roll, I'm like just very casually giving you drama. Drama. <laughs> Drama. That was we, how I got through. We, uh, Orfe, we cannot thank you enough for you helping us solve a problem because the reprise <laughs> oh is one of our very favorite things where you go, um, the Irish fear nothing and no one, but it ends mm -hmm. with the, the line, uh, the country of whiskey and love. And we didn't know what to do because we didn't want to just end with the low note and love. <laughs> So then we said, oh, why not do the country of whiskey and love, which was a very, very cruel thing to do both to you and the audience. But so together we collaborated and we came up with the two notes and love. And it was great to watch the audience go. Yeah, two stages. It was it was my favorite part of the night. Wasn't that song about a dog at some point? How men are like dogs. And yeah, more well knows that. Why can't a man be more like a dog? Oh, right there. oh another song for the podcast, the next podcast. <laughs> yeah. Here, boy. What, here that, boy. what that one you said the lyrics to me, here boy, there boy. That yeah. was yeah. that was good boy. Yeah, that was that was good, that boy. Boy. good boy. Yeah. Uh, Hysterical. Oh my god. Yeah, and and Orfe, remember your uh oh no, I don't know if you did if you were if you, this was not this was before you, I think, because <laughs> With, this was in the workshop, but I mean, that song was Why Can a Man Be More Like a Dog? And then it was Bad Idea, Bad Idea. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Bad idea. But well, you said like Rachel that, 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 something. Yeah. Bad idea is like a textbook example of a bad idea. Of, of well, yeah, but <laughs> like it's what I use to try to describe how you know songs must be cut because we, 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 <laughs> I remember we, Jerry choreographed this incredible, it was this Russian oh. feeling, and people were on brooms being carried around, oh, and it was so much fun, and we were all having a great time, and we watched this spectacular, gorgeously choreographed, well-sung thing, and we said, this is not the right song. And it was, <laughs> but it was yeah. so good and entertaining, but you just knew, we're like, yeah, this, this is not it. And that was- I remember the day you guys came up with Ireland and you brought it in, everybody was like, bing, that's amazing. Oh, hold on. We have oh. a visitor. No, hold on. Oh. It was. How did our daughter get in your house? <gasps> How did our daughter get in your house? Yay! Welcome to show business. What did you say? 
Who I say hi? Cutie, I think hi. every single day, oh, by the way, is gone so far. Every, <laughs> every, yes, every time I have blonde babies. But Jerry, do you could you remember how you had everybody in the entire company doing uh, Nikki's jump rope number? Yeah, so we, were, we used to warm up for an hour with jump rope, and and we we started with just simple jump, and we got more and more, and more elaborate. First of all, I couldn't jump a rope. I had never jumped rope. I was terrible at it. And my brother was excellent at it. He's an athletic director. And I asked, and he had those jump ropes with those little uh, plastic things. So I asked him how to do it. And he told me how to do it. And I learned on one of those ropes. So I said, I want those specific ropes and got those ropes. And we started with just jumps and swipes and, uh, and yeah, we just started working in pre-production. I did a little bit. Beth was like a jumper. Yeah, and Jason Beth. Patrick fans too, right? They both yes, like, like yeah. and and they were very helpful in, in the rehearsal in the very very early 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 pre-production. They were helpful with me as I tried to come up with you know Mad Dog and Rusty was in there doing crazy shit all the time. <laughs> oh, that thing where you would do little uh, flip turns in the yeah, middle. That's yeah. the Mad Dog. He still does it. I can't believe he still does it. But the you Mad were Dog. amazing at it, Jerry. You were like full out every time when we had you had yeah. Michael Rupert doing it. Oh my God. <laughs> I was really good. I can't fucking do it now. I'm no. still, I cannot jump like that. You guys, I'm still like Nikki. teaching it every once in a while, and I'm in Singapore. It's morning here. I'm in the future, um, yeah. and it's a thousand degrees here. And I needed to teach it, so I went outside, and I have to wear a mask. So I'm fully like sweating, <laughs> mask, jumper. I'll have to send you the video. It is a oh kamikaze. You're, you're hot really night. in Singapore right now? I'm literally yes. Good morning, Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> no. Good morning, Singapore. <laughs> yeah, I, we're coming home this week, but I was meant to be directing and choreographing Chicago here right now, and uh, no, alas. Why is it happening? Uh, well, <laughs> we have to keep moving. We have to keep moving. So of Nikki, it's bye so guys. It was so nice to see your faces. Me. So good good here. Good morning, good morning, morning. Singapore, Delta New New. I, oh, are Larry and Nell, okay, before Larry and Nell leave, no one has said that yes. they actually went to Harvard and they met there. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Hello. That is actually quite important for why I think that they understood this show. Also, Nell is blonde and <laughs> and is also one of the most brilliant people I've ever met. So I think that's all. Oh, true, 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 true. Um, true, oh, true. Yeah, you're working well, too, Larry. But there it might well. be one of the reasons that Vivian is rehabilitated in the end is that we're like, we can't make all the Harvard yeah. people mean. I right. mean, come on. Yeah. Um, that and the fact that we really just felt like the thing to do to have well, have her come around and build yeah. this community of women, which was so great. Just, and also, Jerry, didn't we see, I feel like we saw Kung Fu Hustle that same week. Ah, oh, what a great film. Oh my God. Yeah, and film. we were like obsessed with it. And in right. the end, the, the villain, is forgiven. He's for the yeah. guy says he yeah. says, Master, how do you do this? And he's like, I will teach you. And we're like, we should do that. That's our ending. That's our ending. <laughs> we should forgive her. But Jerry's like, yeah, that's what we're gonna do, yeah. you know. So yeah. I remember that. The money palm. The money palm. <laughs> the palm. Yes. Yeah. I think that was part of the influence of saying, like, why do we have to, yeah. you know, kick Warner in the teeth or or not have Vivian come around? We don't. We can do what we want. Well, that was so yeah. great. That was so great. Yeah. And her voice. In the in the in the remake. Oh <laughs> let's let's have Kate join us. Kate, come on, come on in. Oh, yeah. 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 What's up, guys? We're drinking, right? Yeah. Yeah. There that we're awesome. drinking. And also, I've got like, a seltzer and a wine. Yeah, this is this is actually what Am it took to American get us together. Church? Like this is what it's been in yeah. one room since two thousand eight. This is what it took. Yeah. Wow. 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 Well, you've Hi. been a little busy, Kate. Yeah, Madam Everybody's President. been busy. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, yeah, there's, last few weeks have been, they have been busy, but for Why? everybody, What's you know, happening? not just Why? me. <laughs> just, you know, the entire American theater shutting down. <laughs> um, oh. Laura Bell, how are you feeling? Did we cover that? I don't know if we covered that. We didn't. No, we have I, not. I have, well, I mean, uh, I have been... recovered from COVID and, uh, and I and and honestly, I am one of the lucky ones. I had a, a minor case 
And, uh, and, it, and it's terrifying because you just, you just never know when the symptoms, how, if they're going to get worse, how they're going to get worse. But, and it's, it's, you know, feeling a feeling like you can't breathe is uh, like that's not a, cra a yeah. crazy, terrifying feeling, especially as a singer. Um, so, but I'm, but I'm very fortunate. My family is very fortunate that we're okay. And I'm going to be donating my plasma starting May 5th. All right. Yes. Oh, and this awesome. is a good moment to just, just give snaps to Broadway Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. Yes. And everybody else. Make a donation. Make a donation. Very important. Yeah. I mean, like, obviously, Broadway Cares does a lot for us all the time, but Broadway Cares is also a major funder of the Actors Fund. Um, sorry, I feel like I'm doing a thing, and I didn't mean to do a thing. I just That's what we're here for. Um, and the Actors Fund is like helping everybody in their entertainment industry who's in crisis right now. So, you know, it's super fun that we're doing this and that everybody's joined us. But, like, if you can throw in $2 or $10 or $5,000, like, or infinity dollars. And do I think so. pe people are matching it too. So this is a really good time. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. we've got a fund at the actors fund for equity called the curtain up fund, which has matching grants, but this wow, goes yes. directly to um, Broadway cares, which then will turn around and give it to the actors fund, which is awesome. And for every dollar that's being donated today, there's a group of uh, producers who are matching the fund. So. Wow. That's so amazing. Fun. Awesome. Thanks, producers. Yay. We love you. Yep. Should we, should we discuss the fact that I still miss all this fair in love and war? Yeah. <laughs> so do I. I love that song. I love that song. And that's the song I we got to watch. Well, we, we do live in a different world. So there might be an audience now, 13 years later, that might be okay with the lyrics. Yeah. Here's the way to win him back. Thank just you. take the shovel and the sack and give yes. it a good hard whack. whack. Knock that mess into next week. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I remember we gave Leslie Kritzer a like a sparkly Delta new shovel and a sack and that line. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then and we sent her out during a matinee. Who knew that the blue hairs might not like the idea of murdering Kate Schindel with a shovel? I, I was disappointed <laughs> in San Francisco that I liked it. I yeah, like it. I liked it. That was also the day in tech that Broadway's Richard H. Blake like saved my life because the Harvard Gate started oh, coming God. in early and he like threw oh me my out God. of the way. Yeah. No, I mean, yes. I, I probably wouldn't have died, but like maybe I would have died. I'm not sure. <laughs> it was a big gate. It was a big gate. Yeah. yeah. Was, well, listen, we're getting a lot of questions. Uh, that a lot of people are asking, what's the the craziest thing that happened during a show like that? What is the? Oh, I've got one. Yeah. I once sprained the hell out of my ankle in a scene where all I had to do was stand still, like and listen. <laughs> And like I started adding this what about, little what about the, and then what one time the I kicked too high and I fell. No, <laughs> what about the show where Ron drove the, the golf drove cart? The oh my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. into the, the pit. Page. Into yeah. it was going into the pit. I yep. didn't even see it, but I heard it. Was, was gone. He was, was gone. gone. Crazy. Shout out to so James Tampliner. Apparently, a tire came this close to his nose. So yeah. Shout out to James. Our <laughs> And the two, the five front rows all the way stage left yeah. shoved the cart back onto the yeah. stage. Yeah. And Kyle says to me, Paulette, what's going on? And I look behind me and I'm going, I got a vamp. I was like, I have <laughs> no fucking vamping. idea. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And I'm like running yeah. off stage to oh, grab no. whatever oh, no. Piazzi guys were there. Because like oh, no. you, you guys may know this, like I'm sort of a solver. So I was like, oh my god, I gotta go get some stage hands. But by then the audience had like because the theater is about back community, yeah. so the audience yeah. actually shared it's, shared. it's a shared experience. And where are you guys? Where is everybody? What? Larry and Noah, I know you're in the village. We're in the epicenter. Because yeah. danger is our middle name. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, are you in New York? No, I'm out at the house out in Fire Island. Oh. Yeah. And, and do you remember when Laura Bell, your shoe went flying into row R? I'm wearing the poncho. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing oh the poncho. Yes, uh, yes Dory. Do you remember when my shoe fell off, fell off and when I bend and snap so hard, my wig fell off. Yes. <laughs> that, that happened a bunch of times, actually. I <laughs> know, <laughs> three times. Once in positive, once in Ben and Snap, and when was the other one? Um, during a ballad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. During a ballad. 
Oh oh, during this, you remember the night that the salad, lady, and it just let's, went, let's just say then, you were high energy most of the time. Yeah. So, do, do you remember the night that before anybody knew what emotional support animals were, the lady brought yes. the dog and they sat in the front row yes. and yes. like, and I mean, that would be quirky in, a, in any show, but like in our show where they actually, where we actually had dogs. It was just, everybody was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? But but they couldn't oh and wouldn't God. move her. And I understand like she needed the support animal, but it was just this like two and a half hours of, oh my God, what's going to happen with a dog right at the edge of the stage? Well, okay. but, yeah. The dog needed to get distracted by that dog. Yeah. yeah but, but do you remember, you remember that Bill, all through every rehearsal and every training process, the dogs were never allowed to go past the proscenium arch because he mm. wanted them to think there was always a wall there between the audience and the dog. Yeah, yeah, totally. Go oh my God. Way, go towards the pit. There was, that was part of their training that they, they didn't believe that there was, they heard it, but they couldn't focus on what was out there. That's Boo didn't true. listen all the time but though. I do remember <laughs> Chico coming out in San Francisco the first time and James <laughs> head is the only thing you could see coming out of the pit and he just locked eyes with James and James like, oh, gonna bite me do I have to <laughs> but but the but the end the end of the act happened in the first night in San Francisco Bonnie our stage manager brilliant Bonnie, Bonnie. Oh, Bonnie. Uh, Laura Bell was singing so much better and and she was supposed to raise her arms and at the end of the number she was supposed to look in the wings and Chico was supposed to come running to her and right. jump in her arms and she was supposed to raise him blackout and build in the in the wings and he, and he the story is he's going Chico's not going Chico's not Laura, no dog there's no dog coming <laughs> And so Laura hits the note and she's like, what am I going to do? And she jumps in the air and Bonnie calls blackout while she's in the air. Oh, and yes. I'm in the audience and I go, that's the end of the air. <laughs> <laughs> that's a keeper. Oh keep my that was a happy accident. That's, I yeah. do have to ask. That's, that's, that's all. The one thing that Kate didn't add about the woman with the emotional support dog. And Kate, I know you remembered it because you looked at me with your pad while you were on stage and you were like, she's putting a pee pee pad down. The dog is <laughs> never She totally the dog did that. That was the crazy part. <laughs> she totally did that. But then it's also, so like, better than not. Wait a minute. Better than using a playbill. But how about <laughs> when Go. Laura Bell and I were in Bend and Snap, and there was a family that had an entire chicken meal that they pulled out. <laughs> oh my God. And I started thought eating. Ireland. I thought that was during Ireland. Yes, because we were we were in the was it Ireland? In Ireland, because you started to sing Ireland with touching great ballad. force and intensity. <laughs> oh, right. right in the early rows. And we're like, wow, this is a new take for Orfei. <laughs> and then we yeah, we're like, what's happening? And then we're like, do you smell chicken? <laughs> yeah. Then, I know why I thought it was Bend and Snap, because during Bend and Snap, Morbell looks at me and we're like, miming eating chicken. Now, you bend and snack. And she fell out. She fell out. Well, and by then, the biscuits had come out. I mean, it was ridiculous. Guys, I, I have a real question. Okay. Is it possible that we've made it this far? into crazy things happening without talking about the people having sex in the box. Yeah. Am I the only one that remembers that? Like there were literal people that got thrown out for having sex in one of the boxes. Wow. Wow, I forgot all that. Sure. I just was going to not. It was probably because of the UPS guy. Yeah, I think so. Well, on, uh, on that important note, I think it's a good good opportunity to bring in our legal counsel, <laughs> Professor Callahan. So, uh, <laughs> Andy and Orfe, you guys oh, are oh, awesome. Oh, so oh, good to see you. Love you. Oh, oh the my God. There he is. <laughs> Michael Ruber. Michael. Hey, guys. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! How long have you been listening, Michael? Well, I've been listening the whole thing. I've heard, I've been listening <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> it's, it's great. Yeah. It's, I it's to, great. I'm I'm so happy to see you, Michael. Michael was this solid rock for me as a first time director on this musical. <laughs> I I felt 
I didn't know what the hell to do with Blood in the Water. I had no idea what I was going to do with it. And it was so above my intelligence level, written by the brilliant Larry and Nell. And I kept <laughs> thinking, how in the hell am I going to, because I was a dancer and a choreographer. And I wanted to do, you know, like, I wanted to do, you know, gay or European for Blood in the Water, basically. Right, I right. that staging in my mind. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute. You don't have to do anything. Let the actor tell the story. Let the, <laughs> let the audience hear his wit and charm in this lyric. And it ended up being something that I loved so much because I had so much trust in you as a musical theater superstar to Not sell the number. I'm curious. Well, and thank you. Thank first you. Director, <laughs> That scared me the most about the musical because I didn't know how to do it. Well, it was uh, it, it was it was really funny because when I I first got Blood in the Water and and you know which I I really did love, but I, you know when I first heard it I thought like after all of this incredibly energetic youthful music and all of these people and these jumping around and absolutely this is what I thought when I first when I first day I walked into rehearsal was these these people are like, first of all, I was the old guy. So I thought these people are all so young and so bloody brilliant. I mean, these, there was the depth of talent in that cast was unbelievable. Was but a, anyway, I thought like, yeah, you're such a is, hack. is blood. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I'm a cheap, but I'm Michael, I'm Michael, a cheap entertainer. But there was but, no one like you. When you came into the audition, you were the first person who got that this is effortless for this billionaire lawyer genius oh, guy. Well, that's and nice. that that's all nice. you had to do was come in and be in a really good mood because you're a fucking billionaire. But, you know? <laughs> and that was it. Well, but I even, you know, I don't know if you, you remember this, Jerry, when we were in San Francisco, there was a moment when I even came to you and I said, is what, what I'm doing with blood in the water, is it enough? Because again, the the, 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 the the audiences the audiences were just already in loving the show so much, and and again there was so much energy yeah. in this show the way it was staged the way it's performed, and here I'm just coming coming in and kind of doing this like laid back, you know, sleazy lawyer guy who's like really the villain, but and so I'm thinking I, like oh, is smart. this you oh, know is, is this am I is this going to be good enough? <laughs> I mean, literally, of all of the of all of the things in the show that I think taught me some some lessons, I think Blood in the Water taught me a whole nother thing as a director, trusting the writing, and, yeah. and yeah. that the writing can handle the work if you've got the right person delivering it. And it was a real eye opener for me. I really think I I I mean that we had worked together before on. Uh, putting it together, right? On this long time show, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we had we had spent a little time together and you know, I was, I, I watched you like a hawk through that whole process. But um, yeah, it was just a huge learning experience for me to just have to stage that number coming, <clears> up, <throat> coming up off of all of the hairsprays and what I thought as a dancer, right, right. time director. Well, that was also the thing, again, with Blood in the Water and with uh, so much in the show. And I know Larry and Nell, you're just sitting here and Heather is, is gone at the moment. But, you know, that was the thing that I was so kind of in love with was the fact that everything in the show, the writing was as smart as it was. The yeah. writing was smart yeah, yeah. and it yeah. was like, and, and, but it's true, you guys, it, it really is true. And, and I finally kind of came, you know, after, after, I don't know, a week and a half in San Francisco before we came to L to, to New York, I finally realized, you know, I, you know, it's true. You don't, you, certainly with blood in the water, I really don't have to do anything. All I have to do is talk. <laughs> and sing, sing these words, and look at these people, and just you know, I, I, and Bic, but it's it, it's a credit to the writing of the show. I think. I mean, it was it's smart stuff. I don't yeah. know, Michael. The you're first selling time, yourself a little short. Well, yeah. The having, first time yeah. I heard you sing that song in rehearsal, like as someone who wore out multiple copies of the Falsettos album, like that <laughs> one album. <laughs> were like actual silver discs that we could hold in our hand and play it on a CD player. I almost fell out of my chair. I was like, oh my God, that voice, like that's the voice. Um, and then also, you know, you're fun and nice and sort of the subversively person. snarky. 
Yeah. Well, it was a, you know, okay, the, the also whole thing, sweet. <laughs> the sweetest guy. And I was playing the villain, you yeah. know, but it was, it was just, uh, the whole experience guys was just, it was so much fun other than maybe the, the autograph line when all of the girls who loved Laura Bell so much hated me <laughs> and, didn't want, and didn't want my autograph. They're like, you shame know? on you. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, no. Totally. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I, I'm kidding, but it's, it was, it was, no, an you're enormous, not. It, I, no, I'm not normally not. <laughs> it was an, it was just an enormous amount of fun. You know, it really was. But uh. Jerry, I was just thinking a very similar thing that, that, you know, I don't, I can barely walk, let alone dance. And, uh, the, my, my thing was like, oh, we should just have to patter songs all over the place with incredibly, if you remember we had that. <laughs> We had that song about the LSATs at one point, literally oh, a song yeah. that comes oh, yeah. through the LSATs and our opening number to act two is very, right. and you were like, we need a Broadway act mm -hmm. two opening. We need They need to breathe song, and dance, not think. And it needs to sound like right. we're in a theater, not in fact taking the LSATs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so like, I think for all of us, there was a learning curve of like, okay, here's what I do great. And now I have to learn to do something mm -hmm. else to make this work, which is kind of the whole Elle Woods journey, right? Like I do all this great. What was the lyric of whipped into shape before we changed it to the cardio whip 5000? It was something else. There was it? another song. Yeah, the previous version it was, was called like, work, work It For Me. Work It For Me. Work it for oh, me. yeah, oh, right. right. And, then, and then I remember asking you guys, we went through this whole conversation about, well, you know, Suzanne Strummers ha Summers has the thigh master and so-and-so has this. I said, could you, could you write the lyric and give me a prop that I could use to create a dance number? And you came <laughs> back with the Cardio Whip 5000 and that's what the number was born. Oh, are you that's blaming right. it on us? <laughs> oh, oh, really? In that in case, we were really sorry, I Nikki. Jump rope and I said, okay, I'll make it a jump rope number. <laughs> Just love well, I, I wish we could go on and on and on. I want to thank Larry and Nell for, for joining you. us. And oh, Michael. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Stay safe. I have any blind kids, but I have a cute boyfriend. <laughs> and he's okay. here. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Very cute, Kate. Bye, Bye, guys. Wait, are we leaving Bye. or are we staying? We you're playing, you're right? leaving. We're leaving now. Bye. Yeah. Yes. Bye. 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 We're leaving. We're staying. Um, We're leaving. Nope. Bye, Michael. It's so bye. good to see you. Oh, bye, Michael. Uh -oh. Right. We, we are going to uh, bring on um, uh, a very important trio. But first, again, you guys, make sure you're donating to Broadway Cares. Very, very important. Um, there, there are opportunities that uh, are all over your screen on how to do it. Definitely go for it. Um, in, and now um, it's uh, thrilling to be able to bring uh, onto our stage our uh, Pilar and our Margo and our Serena. Please join us, Emily Ashford. Oh my God, Emily. Hello. I decided to come and talk to you tonight. She brought the trouble. I've been caught in Margo in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> What do you have in your hand? Oh, it's I the shovel! Oh, oh my, god. my god. That is so funny. Oh yeah, my I can't believe you god. have it. You Did that you last year it. It. presented to me the my last show and I Oh my it. god. Was so that I got it. so good? So, so um that was only in San, San Francisco. Then we came to New York and we started changing and that's when we put in positive. That's right. Yeah. Hi yeah. Everett. Hi, Chris. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, Tori. Oh, my God. Oh, I love you guys. I love you. Wow. Wow. We are. Wow. We are. It's so good to see you guys. I know. You too. You still um, look Everybody cool. looks fabulous. I'm surprised you all don't all have Star Starbucks. <laughs> I, made a, I made a drink. It should have been in your Starbucks cup for you know, know. the trial. Oh yeah, so cool. and that red coat. I want that red. Where's that red raincoat? Can we track that down? Red, white, and blue. Yes, those costumes. Oh, I love yeah. my coats. Yeah, it's aware of that. That's Greg amazing. Barnes, who I spoke to today. Greg Barnes, man. How's he doing? Great. He's great. 
Do you guys remember the green python boots I had that got cut after one performance, not actually rehearsal in San Francisco? I Did I cut them? Maybe. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I still have I them. them. for myself. Do you remember the party bike? Do you remember the party bike that got cut? Where's the party bike? Where is the party bike? Oh. I forgot about it. And Kate's like, you have to talk about the party bike. I'm like, I don't remember the part. I don't even think I remember like three things from San Francisco. That'll be <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. For, for the for the audience members who don't know what a party bike is. And when we were creating the show, there were these bikes that you sit on and everybody sits mm -hmm. in a circle and pedals madly, but the bike moves in one direction. It's called a party bike. And I saw them in Times Square. We had them for like about four months in Times Square. I said, I what a great thing. way to have the Delta News, Margo, Serena, and Pilar ride in on a party bike during Chip on My Shoulder. And we got one specially made. Yeah. Oh and it was pink and it was fabulous. I think it cost sixteen thousand dollars. And we were in tech rehearsal. We didn't even do a performance. We were in tech rehearsal, and you were all on it pedaling, and it's coming out so damn slow. And it gets to the center of the stage, and I and I turn and I go, "We have to cut the party bike." We <laughs> And we, I don't think we'd get through that with straight faces with these two. I can't imagine. We would be a mess. Do you, remember, a disaster. Do you remember when we almost fell in San Francisco through the hole and yes. Lord, we basically oh. saved our life? Yes. We were like, oh, yes. and then we turned around and you're like, stop. <laughs> we almost fell through the hole. We were like, trap, the trap hole? Yes. 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 We come up. It we come up like that. That was terrifying. That elevator that would, you know, terrifying. Was, there was a time, you know, in legal in the legally blonde ballads, you, you know, when Christian is coming up in the, in, the, door. With the door. I remember that. And it didn't it was a week before I was leaving the show and the door did not come up. And I almost walked into it and <laughs> but also also Christian was supposed to start singing. And the music was going. And of course, James Sampleiner can't see what's going on because he can't see that there's a hole. He just sees that no one's coming up. And so I just started singing like lyrics that were like from the first reading when the, or the workshop when there wasn't an Emmett at the door. There wasn't even Emmett. You've got crazy brain that can remember I everything. I don't know. I just was like, it just like started rolling out. And then suddenly he goes, like suddenly I hear, there she is in turn of the year. And he's <laughs> oh my god. Up. And Leslie Kritzer, let me tell you, one of my first of all, you guys all kept me sane and happy and laughing every we laughed so day. much. We laughed so I, hard. So much. It's like one of the most giddy times for me was being on stage with you and yeah. just everything that was going to happen. And also you guys were always, your performances never got stale. They always got there. Anna Lee, like, I mean, you would like the stuff you were doing that like, you, you know, it wasn't for the audience. It was just you exploring the character and adding and adding and adding. Boring. Oh, it, I didn't say boring. I said exploring. I said exploring. Um, yeah. <laughs> Laura, do you remember That's what the rehearsal process is for? Do you guys remember how oh. we would be crouched underneath the mirror in that little box yes. for a long time? For like a 20 long time. minutes, a whole song and a half. All of Ireland. There was, no, there was like, no wall, and I wasn't going to have anybody come out and put up a poncho so you could get off stage. Anna Lee, is in, Anna Lee, you guys were in like white jeans and white yes. shoes. Yes. yes. And you had those shoes that you asked that be custom made before everybody was wearing high tops. Because I was like, uh, no, so really there's flats. You're like, really I can't wear flats. Can you make this a heel? So they made you like custom. They were made made you what crazy everybody's shoes. been wearing for the past five years. Yeah. They were high top, high heels. Greg Barnes was ahead of the curve. We'd sit though. We'd really sit there, and friends. Leslie would tell us who she was dating, and yes, we'd talk about what we ate, and sometimes we'd fart. Yes, uh, oh, I remember, I remember that. When I was Do you guys remember when I had the run that performance? Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh no, I don't want to know. <laughs> but that's me from opening night. Yes, <laughs> it worked. I was so thin. I was. I was burnt. I was. I think Nick and Tom and I were both wearing crest white strips in tanning boots. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that skin. It's burnt. I was saving so much money. 
I'm like, <laughs> I haven't done that. Oh, oh <laughs> my gosh. I tell you. It was good. Good times. Good times, guys. And Leslie, did, Leslie would do, uh, I remember in San Francisco, we were at the top of the stairs and it was what you want. We were testing what you want. And it was, the you know, the right before we were going to walk down, what you want right here, like down the steps. Step, boom, and step, boom, step, boom, through each other. And Leslie, you, you started doing Liza Minnelli impersonations. Oh, in text. In tech, and I we also worked on that candle thing forever. Remember, oh. we stand with the candles in rehearsal. We never got it right for like the longest time. I don't know. All, I, rem all I remember was bad choreography. <laughs> all I remember, all I remember in San Francisco is standing in the lobby doing that candle choreography, and then moving on to new lyrics and new choreo for Love and War. Love and War every day, two hours every day, every day in the lobby. I feel I remember being like, "Is this carpet safe?" <laughs> we spent a lot of time on it. Nobody had been in that theater for a long time. Oh, wow. Laura, Laura oh, on it. I got in the bunny outfit. I'll never forget the first time we saw you in that. And how She's poor so it. Good. Oh my God. How, that, what? That's how the poncho came into existence. Greg, Greg, Greg had built the bunny costume, and she—you looked like a million bucks. A million you bucks. Walking, you were walking on from stage right in a bunny costume, and I wanted to make you enter the party. And there were no doors; there were just these two things. And so I said, "Greg, can you get a poncho that that I can give to Paul, and Paul can stand like this and, <laughs> and sneak in from the." from the side and appear closer to the center of the stage when she comes in in the bunny costume. He said, sure. We, and he made this poncho. It's basically a blanket with a hole in it. <laughs> and, 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 he made and I said, Paul, just go on and take it over, take it over to that side by, um, by Galen and them and just hold it up and say, hey, you guys, I just got back from Guatemala. Look what I got. And then more about run in. <laughs> That's so funny. That was how oh we my God, it. all those things. I, I totally remember that. Oh, hey, where are you guys, Leslie and Asma? I'm in New York. Where are I'm you two? Jersey. New York. Great. New York. Great. Um, great. LA. <laughs> LA. Fire Island. Fire Island. The house that L built. The house that L built. The house that L built. That's so fabulous. <laughs> it's true. It's the house that L built. That's, That's what amazing. <laughs> oh, I love that. Hey. Yeah. Hey Jerry, is that the, the shirt that I made with your yeah. picture on it? <laughs> that was my shirt with my face on it. My opening night gift in San Francisco was a picture of the poster with Jerry's face because Jerry would always say, "Let me be you." So I I let oh, him man. be me, and I oh, I put his face and then on. That's our poster. Uh, and that's from Paul's dad and mom. Yeah. For my birthday and then this is my I, I loved all of your opening night gifts don't get me wrong but this is still my favorite one that, that was oh, amazing, amazing. Oh. And carlos and her child i can't <laughs> that's too much you guys by the way mark bruni texted me and he said i can't believe that that shovel says anus and i was like it doesn't say anus it says delta news <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't say on it. Delta new. Delta new, new, new. Oh, my God. That picture from opening. Oh, my God. That's magic. That's amazing. Oh, my God. Have that. Do you use it when you garden? You have a lovely no. garden. Do you garden? It's like, this is like, this goes, this goes with the, this stays upstairs. And this is, I don't keep a lot, a lot of things from shows. And this is one of them. This is like one of the, the big ones that I so that, that's upstairs. It's in the archives. Hey, what happened to the sack? I think I was the one. Who had the sack? We had it's a sack. Oh, the sack. I don't know who had that sack. <laughs> you gotta find that sack. Sack <laughs> lyric. I don't know who had that. On that note, I just have to share sack. something about parenting during the pandemic. Hey, Jack <laughs> took off his underwear when I was like, tied my head turned the other way. <laughs> turned around and he had lifted up his pee pee and was looking at his balls and was like, Mom, what are these? <laughs> <laughs> and Joe was running it. So I was like, 
well, they're balls. And he was like, they're not balls. I can't throw these. I said, they're not. You can't throw them. But they're both. Let's talk about it with dad later. They're kind of wrinkly, right? I just said, let's go put on our underwear. <laughs> I can't see with how many blonde babies there are. Isn't that crazy? There's so many people with kids now. It's I know. We're kids. Yeah, no. I know. We had, yeah. we had three kids on before you Your guys neck. before you guys showed well, up. There are so many people who are um, uh, texting questions and yeah, they're all questions? playing. Yeah, they're playing, they're playing all of you in their school productions. And some of them are online right now during quarantine oh. that they are doing Legally Blonde, which is really extraordinary. And they're looking oh. for advice. So could each of you give us uh, a little guidance to, to sh you know, for, for all the kids out there who are playing uh, Serena and and Pilar and Margo and and El Woods. What what words of advice do you have for everyone listening? Annalie, go first. first. Annalie, okay, and, okay. I guess I do the whole thing. Um, I would say uh, first and foremost, what does your character want? No matter who you're playing, you got to figure out what that character wants and how you're and figure out how you're going to get it. And uh, it's right in front of you. It's right in front of you. Yeah. Front of you. Front of you. Front of you. Yeah. Leslie. Um, I agree with Annalie. And I, I would also say make it your own, regardless of what we all did with our characters and what our versions were. Make it your version. Exactly. And have fun with it. Bring the best of you to it and have a blast. I would say too, because it's like it's easy to fall into the trap because the because they can the characters can be over the top that it's important to find the truth in, in the material too, ding, and stay ding, grounded, ding, 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 you know? Ding. Like, I mean, when I first started, I, I was like, I was probably the other way. Cause I was like, wait, I can do this. But once you, once you come from that place of truth, then you can layer on and, and add, you know, adds, add more campy or what, you know, like the bigger comedic details to it. But I think it's, a, it's important to keep it truthful. Yeah. More bell. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I think that it's a, it's a, it's it's basically like what as Moret is saying. I think for L, finding the vulnerability that this is actually a true emotional roller coaster ride for her, and if you can make her human and not a caricature, mm -hmm. you will it will automatically find mm -hmm. that um, that that comedy because comedy is is what's true, um, and it's tragedy plus time. And there's all these tragedies that Elle goes through. So keeping her grounded and, and, and real and finding the heart and remembering that Elle is actually serious. She's just very serious about silly things. And so the transformation is when she becomes serious about serious things. I also think everyone loved Laura. Everyone loved your version of Elle because you fell in love with Laura too. Like, yeah. I'll never forget being in the rehearsal room, watching you and Christian doing that scene. Remember the first time we watched that, the door scene? The we song. wept. And <laughs> it was just like you wanted them to win. And I think the Delta News, they all feel the way we feel about Laura. We love her and we love each other. And I think that's a, a big part of it. These, and we all, all we were present. All of these characters were based on real people. Yeah. Don't forget, and that and that's the most important thing: finding the truth and finding the reality in the characters and playing that first, and not just trying to make a joke of everything. And then the other thing that these amazing actresses all said and were able to find on their own, and um, was was the fun in the great writing that was there. There was such great yeah. writing in Legally Blonde, the wit in the lyrics, yeah, and you know, so being able to believe that you can talk to a chihuahua and the chihuahua can talk back to you. You have to believe that. And and, and you believe that, Annalie. And it was funny because you believed it and we believed it too. Yes. So, you know, that, that's where you got to find the truth. Find the truth. I also will say too, like we've all, we've done a lot of shows, you know, between all of us. And I, one of the things that I remember that was such a gift is that I remember with you three, especially like everyone looked each other in the eye. We were always present. Like when you said our performances were never stale, it's because we were all so present. 
you know, and any and something would like, you know, go wrong or there's someone would go up on a line or something. We were just always there with each other. And that's that's an important thing, too, is to like, you're a team, you know, and it's, it's important to feel safe with the people that you're on stage playing with. Totally. Amen. And I think I think everybody like we the show was set. We knew what numbers we were going to. We knew what yeah. we were doing. But there there was a little room to grow and to uh, to find our characters better. And I mean, different line line readings and things. So we weren't listening to each other. You know, we were off. Everybody in that show, Christian, um, yeah. Leslie, Annalie, every Orfe, everybody yeah. was gonna like maybe like drop something on you you weren't expecting to get so you better be listening <laughs> yeah right. and yeah. the fact that the jokes were found a year a year into the show that we never found in the rehearsal room was was always just amazing to me and i i love that um you, you, because, you, you know what would be awesome too is all these kids um all these awesome kids who are doing the show around the country if there's a possibility that your family and friends for the price of admission, if they could also donate to Broadway Cares, that would be the jam. Yeah. And no donation is too small. I'm saying, you know, 50 cents is a donation. Anything you possibly can give would be like so fantastic. Um, anything you can give, that would be real great. It would make me crazy, guys. Um, crazy. For, the, for those that are going to be listening later on, it's broadwaycares.org slash help 2020. And you can donate if you're listening past months from now. So very important to support Broadway. And you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, Asmaret, Leslie, Annalie, adore you all so much. Uh, we have another group coming in. Love you, oh, love you guys. <laughs> so glad you're healthy and safe. So we have, we have, uh, uh, Becky Golfzig, uh, Jess, uh, who was with the company from the very beginning and stepped Hi. into your shoes for a long time and uh, uh, is, has been coming away recently. And uh, Kate Weatherhead. Hi. Oh, Kate. And Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh. This has been so much fun to watch while I waited. <laughs> Yeah, I I remember Becky being in the original company, and then and then me getting to tell her that I wanted her to do the national tour at and, intermission of a show. I, was that what, I don't remember? Oh what my it, god! You came to the dressing room. room. I remember yeah. being able to tell you, and how exciting it was for me to be able to tell you because I loved you so much. Mm. And then and then of course the tour became a huge success much bigger financially success for the production that then launched London and Australia. And, um, and I remember you were backstage in a quick change and fell and broke your foot, I think, right? It Did was you? after a show, um, after a curtain call at the Kennedy Center, just walking to my dressing room. <laughs> and I picked up the phone and I called Laura Bell and I said, what are you doing? <laughs> You need to help me. You need to go out to the tour immediately because she has broken her ankle. You need to fill it or something. And you did, didn't you go? Did you go like the next day? Well, no, Jerry, you left me a message at six o'clock in the morning. I had a call <laughs> from Jerry Mitchell. I just want to keep in mind that when I was 28 years old, I woke up at noon and uh, I lived in Nashville. And, um, and so I get this, honey, honey, what are you doing tomorrow? Can you come to Washington, D.C.? And can you do this? And I'm like, oh, my God, what? What? I hadn't done a show in six months. It wasn't in my consciousness. I was like, can I do the show? Do I remember it? Do I remember the line? I flew out the next day. And, um, and you know, Becky, I think I do remember seeing you. Because I, I remember seeing you. No, you came back. You, so the show was going on. One uh, one of the other women was doing L. So your under one of your understudies was was uh, playing L. And then um, and your other understudy, Rhiannon, had fractured her leg. So that's why it was uh, like there was only one cover. And yeah, like we all know, yeah. there was no, you know, they were gonna have to start like just going deep. You know, just getting getting people to. 
Um, yeah, that was that was crazy. That was crazy. Oh, and I felt so awful for you. And you know what happened when I was doing honeymooners? Um, when we took it out of town, I broke my big toe. Oh, it's the worst. So I know how it is. It's 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 the worst, and it's devastating. And um, but you were so good in the show too. I saw you in the show, and oh, and you were you. and you're so fantastic, and your voice is flawless. Yeah, you and the crap out of it. <laughs> Very kind, thank you. It was so I fun mean, to do. And you had and DB was in it, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who's now my associate director on everything. I love it. Amazing. Um, it was amazing. Kate, I wanna. I just wanna say that Kate was brilliant in the show in New York City. I mean, I think I saw you before the show. Larry and Nell knew you because you were in. Cam Jansen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I came, I came to see you see the show. Oh, that that was you? Because they said, <laughs> no, it was a big hit. I came to see the, show. It was the young audience show and you were spectacular in it. And and I put you in, in the show as a Delta New slash Chutney. When you walked on stage <gasps> in that I'm show, JJ. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Thank Queen. you for joining or, us. Enid. Outfit and that wig, I was like Greg Barnes. Oh my God! You have created an entire character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The entire so, character. I'm gonna try to tell this story very quickly, but I don't know if you remember this, Jerry. But the very first time we ever read through the script, the when we got to Chutney, that role actually had not been assigned, and Larry stood up and he was like, "Oh, that's um, that's um, uh, Kate Weatherhead," and I was like racking my brain, trying to think like in the movie, who is this? And I went right to Raquel Welch, not oh. Linda Cardellini. Cause I was like, Larry knows I'm a character actor. Like he's just, I, I'm just doing everybody a favor. And I did like my best 65 year old Raquel Welch <laughs> until we got to the line, until we got to the line, duh. And I was like, oh, I think I've made a mistake. <laughs> and so I went up to Larry at the end and I was like, who is this person? How old is, like, how old is she? And he was like, oh, she's about your age. So I went home that night and I was like, I don't want to, I want to be in the show. And I just screwed up like this little morsel that was given to me. I got to take a big swing tomorrow. So I spent the night being like, how can Did I you make ever? myself indelible to this production? And that's why you got that character. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that day, so good. That day you came in, and you did the walk and the look and the and like we were all we no one could keep a straight face. Oh, Everyone dude. was crying. Everybody so couldn't get through. We couldn't get through it. It was over. We were, was everybody was crying. Yeah. Well. Anyway, thanks for letting me do it that second day. Oh my God! Are you kidding me? Just <laughs> join us, Natalie. 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 And look, I'm still trying to get the technology. I've been what I thought was logged into the waiting room for like 20 minutes, but I then realized I never actually entered the room, so it's going well. <laughs> um, I have two things I have to say really quick. Well, three, which is like, oh my God, you guys, I love you all so much. There's been so much Legally Blonde love that's been happening, like resurgence on the Instagrams and them watching the MTV. And like, it, it just really warms my heart. Um, I literally got like tears in my eyes. I know a surprise. Um, when we were talking about the end of act one and Bonnie calling it in the blackout. <laughs> 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 So beautiful. And also um, that picture from Matt and Manny followed me on tour. I took it on tour. It was in like every one of my dressing rooms on tour and it lived in my dressing room at the Hirschfeld for the five and a half years I was there for Kinky. Nikos and Carlos and their young child. Yeah, and their young child that they borrowed from somebody in Wicked. I mean, yeah. it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I remember Natalie's audition for the show we were at the Telsey office and um, we had lost Donna uh, who had done one of the work the workshops and we needed, we needed somebody and I needed somebody immediately for Enid. And uh, I was auditioning people. And uh, do you remember this? Were you there Dory at the audition? Yes. And she okay, came right. in and auditioned 
and and she left the room and I stopped the audition. I stopped the audition and I looked at everybody on this side of the table. I said, I, I want to hire her. She's the girl. She's it. I want to tell her right now. And they said, yeah, we love her too. We love her too. And so I literally just went right over to the door and I, and I, I said, Bernie, can I tell her? He said, yeah. So I opened the door and I said, Natalie, come here. We're starting rehearsal in two weeks. Can you play the part? <laughs> Ball, boo hoo, tears. Yeah, I Ball believe her out. exact words were, Will you join us on Monday? And I legitimately d died. I was deceased. Everything has been a ghost yeah. apparition since. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. You came into the room. It was an amazing, amazing audition. And then Natalie was an amazing Paulette on the national uh -huh. tour. Thank yes, you. she was. And yeah. she was great kinky boots, too. Oh. Girl, Becky and I really like, we really like put it down all across the country, man. That was like, here's the other thing I will say that I know is true. Having been a part of both families, like very deeply getting to do like San Francisco and open and make my debut with everyone. And then to get to like be on tour and know all of those fools who are amazing and incredible. <laughs> like everybody who has been touched by the, this show, I swear to you, the companies like are out of control and everybody is still like considered each, considers each other family. Even if you haven't seen somebody in a long, long time, that connection is like so real and like is beyond, I mean, it is like a sisterhood, but throughout the entire company, like everybody's Delta News. And it just, um, that really just really rings true to me from both companies. Yeah. I want to you know, say something about uh, the the nature of the show and also its sort of lasting power because I'm always uh, surprised when I am asked to speak to students who are doing it. I'm like, you know, I was in the ensemble. Like, I it, it always sort of is interesting to me. And then over time, I have realized it's because the crafting of that ensemble is so brilliant because everybody gets something amazing to do and yep. memorable. And it's, I think, why it is so popular uh, with community theaters and high schools and middle schools, because what a great show for a, a drama director to go, I got all these kids and how can I excite them? How can I, how can I build this team in a way that they're all gonna show up and wanna do this? And this show is just, perfect for that. When I go speak to kids and the, you know, whoever their director is says, let's go around and everyone say who you're playing. The pride with which they say their characters' names is always so touching to me. Um, and so it, it's like this unbelievable, uh, uh, like benefit, I think, of, of the show that it has disseminated throughout the, the world because it provides a group of people something that they can be really proud of on a you know group level and then on an individual level. And that has become very, very clear over time about this show. It's true. It's yeah, true. I mean, yeah. So great. Gary always said in rehearsal, there are no small parts. Mm -hmm. There are. And do you remember when you made everybody like get like take get a journal and like all the Delta News had to had to write down their name, where they came from every night. What? Michelle Cottrell is CC Samsonite. <laughs> yeah, what was your name, Becky? Like Kaylani or something? Leilani. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Lonnie, you yeah. were the yes. yeah. That was the one Delta new name that was in the script. We don't right. know why. Um, <laughs> I was Tutti because of my outfit that got cut during um, <gasps> the Black Eyes. <sighs> Remember how we all yeah. had handmade the most outfits? Opposite Enid look possible, like espadrille, long blonde hair. Before we all were in juicy <laughs> sweatshirt suits, and I had to have custom made juicy because, well. I was too juicy for the juicy ones. <laughs> We're delicious. Oh my god! On that note, I'm. I'm. Uh, thank you so much, Kate, <laughs> Pete, and Natalie. Of course. <laughs> wow. Really oh, great. Bye. 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 Do I have to so I have we're gonna to, bye Natalie. Love you, Natalie. We're gonna wrap up. You guys stay, and we're gonna bring back Hal and Mike. And I just want to uh, remind everybody 
uh, to support Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. It's so important. Uh, BroadwayCares.org slash help 2020. Donate now. Um, and uh, Mike and Hal and Kristen, I wish you were here. Um, yeah. Our producing partner. I, I just um, want to say, Lori, like this time, this has been such a gift these 90 minutes, being with these people again, this experience, the laughter, what this was in what we're all going through right now. Boy, I'm just so grateful to you for bringing us together. And I really wanna echo what Kate said, because this show, it's, it's like the longer it's been off Broadway, the stronger its legend and power has kind of become because there's so many people who have done it and seen it and created it themselves. I, I went up to University of Michigan last year and they were doing a, a student production and they asked me to come, same thing sort of Kate and we're talking and, and this, you know, and I asked them about themselves and the most powerful stories of them telling me what Legally Blonde the musical meant to them. Young women, men, everything, like this, this, the soul of the show and listening to all these people and how it was created and everyone together. And this, this is why it's lasted. Yeah. This is why it's lasted. I agree with Mike 150%. And, and uh, um, you know, because I think she, the character endures. And at the time it was written, both the, the book, uh, the film, and then our musical. You know, it's interesting to look at what Elle represented back then. And, and oh, there's Elle. And um, I can't help wonder, you know, if we reimagined Elle for the current time that we're in, not necessarily the COVID time, but, you know, where it's the Me Too and, you know, we don't think of blondes as dumb blondes anymore, but, you know, women, strong women, powerful women, leadership women. What would that look like, you know, in if we reimagine a, a contemporary Elle Woods? Yeah. I don't know. I don't what know. Do think? What do you think about that? Well, I think... Uh, well, I'll uh, tell Jared, you that actually... Yeah. I feel like this musical is more relevant today than it ever has yeah. been. Yeah. And that this story and dealing this woman that um, that starts out believing that she's nothing more than um, a, a like the best thing that could happen to her is being a wife. And then, mm -hmm. and, and those are the expectations she has and society has for her. And then she imagines something better and she achieves it. And she believes that, you know, she learns that she's so much better. Right. And then she goes on to be given right. this opportunity and to be dealing with this sexual harassment. I mean, it couldn't be more, and more. then she takes this butt. I mean, it couldn't be more relevant. I would say the only change you need to make is Elle needs to be in a pink pants suit. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. But you know, I mean, seriously, well, first of all, LBB, I, I want to thank you. This lime juice thing that you sent us, that was is that you, the recipe for this? <laughs> <laughs> That's the Laura Bell I remember, but it's it's like fantastic. Um, but seriously, you know, at the time we did this in the '90s, the the real issue was, you know, that females at that time and before had to dumb themselves down. That was the whole impetus of of us. One of the th reasons for doing this is that I couldn't believe that phenomenon that girls actually in those days would would not want to be the smartest in the class because guys didn't want the smartest girl in the class. You know what I mean? Um, and now we can flip that in such a way that I agree that it, it, if, if that wasn't, you know, her drive, that she is the smartest girl in the class, she is a leader, and these wackadoodle things keep happening to her in a funny kind of way, um, I don't know. I'm thinking Elle Woods <laughs> is never going to die. <laughs> That's for sure. The well, only I'm thing not... I would suggest if we do it, I have to do two things. I have to watch the producers again with Mike, and I have to tackle Jerry outside the 42nd Street. <laughs> Other than that, and, and you know, say it to Dory, who said, oh, my God, I could see that. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Well, but, on that but, note... <clears throat> Dory, what a blessing. This is Thank you, Dory. Thank, Thank you, Thank you Jerry, Laura Bell, Mike, Hal, Kristen. I know you're listening. And everybody who was on a special event podcast. Yeah. 
uh, and today. Please. And all the all members of our Legally Blonde company on stage and behind the curtain who were not with us today, if only we could keep going for hours and hours yeah. and hours. We wanted all of you to be this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to all the blondes out there who have done this show in their schools um, and communities, uh, you're all part of our family as well. Uh, we just want to remind you uh, last time, keep supporting Broadway Cares. Yeah. This is uh, yes. it's an essential Please. charity during this yeah. time. The work that they're doing right now Please. is Herculean yes. to help so many people in need. Yeah. Broadwaycares.org slash help 2020. Uh, dot org. Um, and also please go to the Broadway Podcast Network. We have over 60 amazing theater casts. You can check out other deep dive uh, Broadway podcasts. We have uh, so many great town hall events coming up. Uh, and we have even cosplay in quarantine and the Physical just launched uh, a hashtag build a virtual prom. You should check out so many things. BPN.FM, definitely check it out. Um, and most importantly, uh, theater will be back. Yes, it, it absolutely is. will be back. And when it happens, yes. go. Go yeah. to theater wherever you are. Go. Uh, we can't wait to see you all there. But in the meantime, please, everyone, take excellent care and stay safe. Story, I'm just going to do a shameless plug for the Broadway Podcasts Network and Broadway Cares. Um, I myself uh, are going to have a Broadway Podcast Network uh, show <laughs> soon called Broadway Biz. But I, I think that what Dory and the whole Broadway Podcast Network does and how they communicate with theater, people of theater, people not of theater, um, it's just an amazing, an amazing thing. And um, I love you so much for doing this for Broadway Cares. You know, we, Jerry and I talked about it this afternoon. We were there, we were all there really, when, you know, the, the theater community was being decimated by a thing yeah. no one understood called AIDS. And, you know, all this time later, there's just as needed. They help people in trouble of all, you know, shapes and stripes. They're there. They're like the rock of Broadway. So whatever you can is, there's nothing too small and there certainly is nothing too big. Right? <laughs> you can. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you all for joining us tonight. And uh, uh, to my blonde family, adore you all so much. Very, 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 very grateful. Snaps, everybody. Snaps. Snaps. Snaps.